Yeah. Oh, they're big old beasties, aren't they? Before yeah, so marshland foxing, oh, where marshland oh, frogging. This marsh frog is Europe's largest native species of frog and was introduced to Kent in the 1930s. The Marsh Frog Chorus will be performing the backing track to this evening's main activity, which is to dial down the predator numbers before the game birds arrive. I've managed to sneak out for a couple of hours because I just can't resist this time of year. Um, we've had the, uh, the hay cut out on the marsh here and we've got the partridges coming in um, within about the next 10 days, so we've really got to get a little bit of a headway into uh, reducing the fox population out here before they start causing problems. Because as soon as the partridges come out here, um, especially the, the young foxes, they just absolutely hammer them and will be constantly badgering the partridges in the release pens. Um, the fields were cut two or three days ago um, and they've already started bathing some of them. Unfortunately, we couldn't get out any earlier because we've had a full moon. So this is about the first night that um, we could get out here that we're not going to be illuminated by the moon behind us, um, which again is just not good, especially you know, when, you, when you start out, you don't want to be educating a piece of ground that's got lots of foxes on it. Um, and when you're hopefully going to be shooting big numbers, the last thing you want to be doing is, uh, is riding around with a full moon and uh, announcing our presence all over the place. One Before we hit the cut grass fields, meter. Roy needs to check zero. He's been given a Mauser M18 with minoxscope and a front-mounted Pulsar night vision unit to test. But he needs to be satisfied that all are in tune. So what we're going to do is we're going to shoot with the lamp to start with, just to make sure that we're on target and see where we're going. And then once I've got the rifle zeroed and I'm happy with it, then we're going to transfer over to the night vision. And hopefully we should be shooting in exactly the same spot. So let's see what this little old Mauser can do. Okay. With three shots, we are stuck on target. So theoretically, we should just be able to click on the front-mounted night vision. We've got a, a housing here that just locks down in position like that with a shim underneath. So that's nice and tight and firm on there. The only thing, obviously, you just need to make sure is you've got enough clearance um, with the mounts underneath so it's not interfering with your barrel, which this has. And then it should just be a case of Locate that on, lock it into position, and we shall turn it on and see what we get. Okay, so we have got pretty much where we need to be on there. So we shall load up and see if we can find some foxes. With the kit singing in harmony, Roy hits the harmonica call. Nothing. Not a sausage. He swaps to the willow call and possibly discovers a bit of old sausage. You can tell the calls have been sitting in my pockets for a little while. I don't know what was in that. <laughs> Tasted meaty. <laughs> there may even be a dead sparrow in there. This is not going to plan. Maybe all that sliced and diced food left over from the mowing has already been snapped up by the scavengers. It means that Roy is going to have to work harder than normal. From the sea wall, our eagle-eyed eagle falconer spots a flash of eyes. We have to drive closer to be sure it's foxy. It is, and there are three of them. Stop. 
we had three cubs um, and they all started to come to the call then. We just then had to creep forward because as they were coming forward, they were going in the long grass and where they were was absolutely perfect. Um, because we could we could just see them through there. If they came any further forward, then we would have lost them um, in this particular patch. So we just crept forward, just did a few little hand squeaks um, and got their interest and that was it. So we managed to come for all three, which is absolutely spot on. I mean, that's what we try and do. And again, that's the lovely thing with night vision because you can just put it on it, they don't know what's going on. There's just a few bangs, and then you can account for the litter pretty quickly like that. So we didn't educate any, all three down. Um, and uh, again, absolutely perfect, because within, we're within about 200 yards of where the partridge, one of the partridge pens is here, so they would have really caused us problems, that little litter. I think the problem is where we are a few days later than um, when they've cut, I think they've probably been out on the, the, the cut fields, they've been in there, they've uh, eaten pretty much everything that's been cut up um, when the hay's been made, um, and now they've, uh, they're all venturing back into the long grass and starting to hunt again. Um, but again, we just couldn't get out when the, uh, the grass was cut because we had full moons. So this is about as good or as close as we could do it because we've got a nice dark night tonight. But um, as I say, not a bad start. Um, we're cracking onto the evening now, at least it's cooling down a little bit. When we started out, it was still roasting hot. So we've got a, a nice cool breeze coming in off the sea now. Um, so it's, uh, it's taken the, the sting out of the heat a little bit, but hopefully we can find a few more. <laughs> you need to bulk up a bit, mate. Considering we were looking at a real chance of blanking this evening, it's a good recovery. And five minutes later, Roy makes it four. This side. This side, you got it. You want it? Pay it? You want it, yeah? Okay. Excellent. Well, that was a tricky little one. That kept us in, in to, sorry, in suspenders. That kept us in suspense for a long time. I've really got to, I've got to get out of that habit. But um, no, that was absolutely superb. We spotted that fox right out in the middle of this field um, and started squeaking. And it came in like a train, but it came in right across us. Um, and then we lost sight of it behind the sea wall here because we're actually sitting up on the top of the sea wall. So we've got um, the marsh here. Um, and then we're looking right out into the estuary out there. Um, and that was phenomenal. It just came bolting in, um, but it came in um, a good 200 yards down and then came along the sea wall and then just crossed over um, just onto the, uh, the side that we could see it luckily um, and just came in there. So yeah, that's accounted for another one. So it's amazing. All of a sudden you just get into a little hot spot um, and, uh, and you start finding them. And again, you can find, you can find litters, you can find um, earth so close together um, in environments like this where there is just such a bounty of food. Um, and the, the old sea walls are absolutely perfect because they've been dug out by rabbits and whatever else. And then all the foxes have got to do is just come along um, and open up an earth for themselves. Um, and within a few hundred yards, you can have you know, potentially a, a couple of vixens having litters. Um, so you, you can get very, very high numbers out here. So you reckon same same litter? Yeah, I would have said that was probably the same litter. So she was just uh, further out in the field having a search around. The foxes played hard to get, and as the clock heads into the wee hours, we call it a night. We're going to call it quits now because it's. Uh, I think we we'll leave it too much longer. It's uh, going to be getting light on us. David's feeling weary, and um, I think he, he needs a bit of a hug. He's, he's suffering now. He's a little bit cold had enough, want some heated seats and a cocoa. So we're going to take him, we'll take him home and tuck him up in bed. So it was uh, nice to get that little group of three. Um, and we had a, a tremendous response from number four as well. So yeah, I'm uh, more than happy with that. And it gives us an excuse to come out again in a week or so. For more information about the Pulsar front mounted night vision units, go to thomasjacks.com. And for more information about the Mauser M18, go to blazersporting.com. Can't go on for too much longer, we're running out of rounds.